There we go, guys. Hooked up, y'all. Hooked up. Come on, buddy. Oh, nice trout. Nice trout. Got him. There we go. There's my stud. Welcome to Jetty Rocks Fishing, and I'm Mike D. Today we're gonna to do another segment of tips and tricks. And today we're gonna to be talking about gator trout. Large trout over 20 inches. We're gonna talk about how to consistently catch them with live bait using croakers or pigfish. And we'll basically be doing free lining techniques. So real quick, let's just go take a look at the bait that we're gonna use, which is a croaker. I'm gonna show you how I catch them, what I use to catch them, and I'll show you the difference between a croaker and a pigfish. All right guys, I'm gonna show you the setup we're using for these little croakers. Basically just a little number eight hook with a piece of shrimp, small little leader, little tiny weight, just like that. That's the setup. I'm just fishing straight on the bottom. And about as quick as you get down there, something hits it, just like that. Guys, this is what we're after. Right here, little croaker. You hear him croaking. This right here is the best trout bait in the world, y'all. So we got four in the live well right now. All right, guys, I just caught another really good bait fish for trout and redfish. This is a pig fish. Really good bait. Hey guys, we're getting some. Look at all that bait right there. A lot of croakers guys all right guys I'm gonna show you the setup that I use to catch the croakers with so basically use a little fish finder rig standard fish finder rig you use your main line to a weight a little small half ounce quarter ounce whatever it takes to get it down to the bottom got a small swivel and just a little section a little eight inch section of leader material this is 30 pound test to a, a number six or a number eight hook. You're just gonna use a little tiny piece of peeled shrimp or you can even cut up a, uh, a Berkeley gulp shrimp or a shad and put a little tiny piece on there and that's what you use to catch them with. And the rod that I got the set up on is an ugly stick medium action. It's about a six foot rod and I have it on a, uh, a Shimano Stratic 2500 reel and I got 20 pound test uh, spider wire on the reel. So this is the setup that I use to catch my croakers with. Nothing real fancy. You know, you can use pretty much anything. All you gotta do is just get that bait down to the bottom. Doesn't really matter the technique or the uh, setups that you use, as long as you get it down there. All right guys, I'm gonna show you the different styles of hooks that I like to use for this uh, technique that I use. I like the worm style hooks mostly, mainly what I use the worm style. But I also will use uh, Owner Mutu Light Circle 5 Watt. These hooks work really well, especially uh, for summer and amber when they're not too uh, quick on the hook set. And, you know, when they ain't got to set the hook real hard, they just got to reel. These hooks work really good. But if you're a hook setter like me, I like to set the hook pretty hard on a fish. These are the hooks I like to use. This one's my favorite. This is just a basic Eagle Claw Laser Sharp Worm Hook, uh, 5 aught. And this one's a little bit different, it's an offset worm hook. It's got a little bit bigger belly on it. It's right here. And these hooks work really well. Real quick, I'm going to uh, show you a clip on how to hook these uh, croakers with these hooks. I'll be back with you in a minute. Basically, we're just gonna take our worm style hook, which is the kind of hooks that I like to use for the style of fishing. Got my croaker, hook him right there in the anal fin, just like that. All right, guys, we're gonna talk a little bit about the rods that I use. These are actually very important. You need a rod with a lot of backbone and a lot of 
force to get those fish off from underneath those docks and away from those oyster bars because the trout loves to cut you off. If he can find something to cut you off on, it will. This rod right here, this is a Shimano Simtar, seven foot medium heavy action rod. I have it outfitted with a, uh, a pin battle, 1000 reel. I'm using 30 pound test mainline. I use no leader doing this kind of fishing. I just go my 30 pound test straight to my hook, my worm style hook. This is a little bit heavier rod. This one is a also a seven foot medium heavy action rod. This is a Shimano Terramar, awesome rod. I have it outfitted with a uh, Abu Garcia 5500 C3. Now here I have 40 pound test. This is the rod that I mainly use around the docks. If I'm getting broke off on my other rod, I'll switch to this so I can yank them out, pull them out real good, and have a little bit more abrasion resistant because I have 40 pound test here. And again, I have no leader, just the main line to the hook. Unless I have that wide belly hook on there. And these are the rods that I like to use. These are my favorite rods for trout fishing. They work really well for me. And if you guys are looking into getting into this kind of fishing, this free lining with croakers and uh, pigfish, this is basically the setup such a I would recommend that you use. All right, guys, I'm gonna talk about what I look for when I look for trout. What I'm looking for. The areas, type of areas I like to go to when I'm trying to target these large trout. One of my favorite areas is docks. Docks is a great structure for big trout, redfish, snook. I've even caught some really nice flounder over some docks. The only problem with docks is you have all those pilings and they can cut you off. So you need to use some heavier line when you're fishing the docks. I like to use 40 pound test, straight main line, straight to my hook. That way I have a little bit more abrasion resistance around those pilings and I can get them out. Sometimes, but a lot of times they will win the battle there. Another place I like to look for trout on is oyster bars and drop-offs. You find a nice little oyster bar that drops off to about three to four foot of water. There's going to be trout laying in there, especially if there's a little bit of current. They're going to be laying up in there because they're an ambush predator. Trout like to ambush their, their prey. So they either get behind stuff or get in little uh, eddy breaks in the water or right off those drop-offs so they can ambush that bait as it comes off. Another thing that I like to look for is flats. Trout love shallow water and during the summertime I catch a lot of my trout in about three to four foot of water, even shallower, sometimes two foot of water. Those are just a few places that I like to look for my big trout at and I have a lot of luck doing that. I'm very consistent with those type of structures, those types of areas catching really big trout over 20 inches and sometimes some really big redfish. Let's just take a look at this clip real quick of Amber. She caught a really nice trout a few months back. She was fishing a little oyster bar break right off the drop off and went from one foot to three and a half foot, four foot real quick. And she got a really nice trout. Let's check out that clip real quick, y'all. Well, that's a nice fish, baby. That's a really nice fish. Follow him around. He's going around that way. Follow him around. Oh, that's a nice fish, babe. Nice fish. Don't let him get stuck down there. Oh, look at that trout. Look at what a trout. Oh, no. Look at what a trout. Holy crap, babe. Oh, my lord. Golly. Yeah. We're having a hard time with this thing. All right, hold on. That's a 10 pound trout. Okay. All right. Got him. Holy crap, babe. That is a monster. Damn, baby. Got it. Holy crap, I'm falling over. Go ahead and release the bale. Guys, look at this trout. That is what you call a gator right there, y'all. Holy crap, babe. <sighs> y'all, look at that monster trout right there. Holy moly. Well, we were a lot of times when you're out there trout fishing, 
free line on this croakers and pigfish. You'll actually catch some other stuff. I'll show you a clip real, here, real quick here. I was fishing this nice little oyster drop off. Where it drops off really quick. Comes off the banks about a foot and a half. It drops off to seven foot really fast. And a lot of times there's some big trout in there, but not today in this, in this clip. You'll see what I caught in this clip. Real nice bonus fish. This is a nice fish. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. Shoot. Well, if he's a red, I hope he's within the slot. This is a nice fish, guys. Nice fish. Come on, baby. This is a really nice fish, guys. Really nice. Man, this is a nice fish. I haven't even got to see him yet. Hey, this is a redfish. He's going to be big. I want to see you, man. I want to see you. Saw my big boil. Oh, that's a nice red. That's a big old red. That is a big old red fish. Oh, yeah. That's that over here. Oh, yeah. That's a big red, guys. Big red. Look at the size of that redfish, y'all. Well, there's my redfish, but he ain't slot by any means. Hoo-wee! That's a nice one. Yeah. That was a really nice redfish, wasn't it? The real good one, a 30-incher. And you also will catch, when you're fishing with the uh, croakers and pigfish, you'll get a lot of jacks sometimes when the jacks move in. They love croakers. They love pigfish. And you also catch some sail cats and some uh, big lady fish at times. Once in a while, you even get a tarpon. One of the techniques I use when I'm using these live croakers is when I throw it out there. And basically what I'm waiting to look for and waiting, waiting to feel is a lot of action with that croaker. If I throw it out there and that croaker isn't doing anything, I'm not getting no movement out of it at all. I'll maybe wait 5, 10, 15 minutes and then I'm out of there. I'll move to a different spot. If I throw my croaker out... And I'm getting a lot of response from this croaker. I'm getting a lot of action. The bait is acting real fidgety, really nervous. There's something there making him nervous. So I'm going to leave it out there a little bit longer. I'm going to fish that spot a little bit longer, see if I can entice the strike. And a lot of times if the bait's real nervous and all of a sudden he stops being nervous, I'll just take the rod and I'll pop it a couple good times to get him to start croaking, get him to start moving. And a lot of times that'll initiate the strike. That's a little tip for you all to try when you start doing this kind of technique. If you're already doing this technique, then you know what I'm talking about. Well, real quick, I'm going to show you a clip of me doing the little popping technique. So you see what I'm talking about, and I'll see you in a minute. Come on, pop it. Alright guys, in this next clip, I was fishing a pretty unique little area. It's a pretty cool little area. It's got a little oyster bar in the front of it there. It comes out about maybe two, three foot and it drops down and there's a big deep hole, real big belly. It's about maybe six, seven foot and it comes up real high to two foot. It's just a little small area but maybe about the size of a truck and those fish get stacked up in there. There's some big ones in there but I catch a lot of schoolies in that, in that spot. So check out this video of me catching a couple little trout in that area. And just pay attention to what you're seeing right there. And just notice, you know, what's on the land, what's on the side of me. And I'm only, when I, my boat is, I'm only in a foot and a half of water. So that little belly isn't very big. So if you find little areas like that, check them out. They deserve some snooping around and some trying out. Hope you enjoyed the clip, y'all. There we go. Hooked up, y'all. Let me just come off again. Oh, there he is. There he is. Nice trout. Nice trout. All right, y'all. 
Got one. There's a nice trout, guys. Nice trout, y'all. This one might be in the 20 range. This one might work. Yeah, this one might work. This one might work. Oh, yeah. Yeah, baby. All right. Whew. All right, nice fish. All right, guys. Number three. Hey y'all, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you find some of the information in this video informative and I hope it helps some of you guys out. If you're already an avid trout fisherman and you're already freelining the croakers and the pig fish, then hopefully you guys just enjoyed watching the video. Well guys, I get to see you again soon here on the water y'all. Tight lines. But before that, thank you everybody for subscribing to my channel. You guys are awesome. I got great subscribers and I appreciate each and every one of y'all. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, y'all. Till next time, guys, tight lines.